Hi, I'm Chelsea and I have five ways to help you get inspired and motivated and out shooting and taking pictures. I think we've all been there. We want to take pictures, but we're like, what am I going to take pictures of? Or maybe you find yourself making excuses. I should be out shooting, but eh, it's kind of rainy or oh, I have work to do or I should do my dishes. There's always an excuse and reason or you just can't find the right thing to shoot. So my number five inspiration to get you shooting is to find a muse. And I would recommend you just keep it simple. You don't have to have the most interesting subject in the world. Part of your challenge is gonna be taking that subject and shooting it in all different ways and finding a cool picture out of what's around you. The painter Monet, he shot the water lilies in his own garden. He loved gardening and painting, and he painted over 250 paintings of the same water lilies in his pond. Those are pretty famous. I'm sure you've heard of those. It's not the most exciting subject. I would never think, oh, water lilies? Everybody wants to see those, but it worked for him, and your muse could work for you too. Tony, you know him, right? He decided to shoot the same lighthouse in our town in different weather, different times of day, and it's incredible. Some of his shots are not noteworthy at all. Some of them came out really beautiful because there was an especially nice sunset. But the main important thing is that we went out a couple times a week together. We'd take a drive, we'd get a coffee, we'd go out and at different times of day and we'd get pictures of that lighthouse together. He had some pretty incredible results, I think. So go out, find your muse. It can be your cat. It can be your dog if you have a little dog like me. It can be your beautiful garden or a landmark in your town, but it'll be nice if it's accessible to you and not too hard to reach. My number four tip for finding inspiration is to give yourself a job. So many people tell me I can't get hired. I can't shoot the things that I want to shoot. I'd love to be a fashion photographer, but I can't do that. Or car photography looks so awesome. That'd be a dream if I could get that job. Just go out and do it. It doesn't matter if you're getting paid at first, if you're getting practice, go out and find a model and do a fashion shoot or arrange some objects in your house and do a product photography shoot. When Tony and I first started out, we wanted to get cool jobs too. We weren't getting paid yet to take pictures and we wanted to. So we just set up our own shoots and we started putting our pictures on stock sites. At first, I got rejected a lot. My pictures were not that good. Uh, stock agencies would tell me, you know, there's some noise in the shadows or the editing is a little off and I'd be rejected. But from every rejected, I learn and I improved and we improved together and we ended up getting our pictures on some magazines. Uh, I was Tony's model, by the way, because we live in a small town and there aren't many models around here. We had spreads in magazines. We had billboards. I went to the gym once and they gave me a pamphlet with me on it. They didn't believe it was me because I've been eating some tacos since this happened. So yeah, and we got a few book covers and stuff too. So we were shooting in our garage. We were learning as we went. Our early photos were not accepted and the ones that were accepted often weren't great. But with every shoot that we did, we learned something and our photos got incrementally better over time. It's not about becoming the best photographer overnight. It's about just doing shoot after shoot and learning something new each time. So get out there, give yourself a job, maybe shoot a brochure for your town or something like that. Just have a cool project and practice. My number three tip is to be a copycat. If you are intentionally being a copycat and giving credit, it's okay. And it can be a great way to learn. You can choose a photo that you love or you can choose a painting that you love and try to replicate the composition, the lighting, the mood, the expressions, if there are people in them. Really try to capture every element of this piece of work that you love. And in the process of building this photo, you're gonna be learning so much. You're gonna realize, oh, it's side lighting that creates drama or getting a good expression really is difficult. You're gonna be building your skills while having a very um, finite goal in mind. So in recreating this picture, you'll be learning so much, but not necessarily thinking about it because you'll just be so focused on your goal. I've seen really cool photographers that replicate famous paintings and it is so amazing how they replicate the light and the toning and the post-processing. It's a good way to have a project that's easy to just grab out of there. Anyone can do it. Anyone can pick their favorite painting or photo and try to make it happen. It's also a great way to appreciate your favorite artists. My number two tip is to pick a technique and try to master it. It doesn't have to be huge. You could do learn multiple exposures or try shooting on a high key background for the first time. Uh, you could try doing a long exposure or a panning shot, 
but just think of a technique, learn how to do it, study it, and then shoot it over and over again. And you'll find that with each photo that you take, you'll perfect that technique a little bit more. And as you take on these projects where you're learning a new technique, you can layer those skills and later photo shoots. So let's say you learn panning, and at first you're practicing on maybe a subject that's not that exciting, but you finally perfect the technique. Well, the next time you go to a sports game or maybe a car race or something, you might get an incredible photo because you've come to an event with a technique that you've perfected and that you know how to use. So get a technique and master it. I worked on multiple exposures for a while and it was a lot of fun. I learned how to do something new and I learned how to take a technique and tell a story with it. And my number one tip for getting inspired and motivated is to study an artist and appreciate them. So pick your favorite photographer or artist if you want and study their work, but also study their life. Find out where they came from, find out what motivates them, find out the stories behind their most famous pictures. I promise you, you're gonna learn so much and you'll be so inspired when you find out even the world's greatest photographers had photos that didn't come out so great the first time. A photographer that I've been studying recently that I love, he has motivated me so much, I think he might be my favorite photographer of all time right now, is Gordon Parks. You have to read about his story, you have to read about his upbringing. He overcame so much, and I love that he really wanted to make positive change in the world using his photography. He has about 40 honorary degrees, and he had a teacher in high school that told him, don't even bother taking college courses, there's no use you don't need it. And then he ended up getting 40 honorary degrees. Really cool. When he accepted one, he was like, I wish that teacher was here to see this. He was a cool guy and you would love him if you researched him. You've probably recognized a lot of his photos. I have his book right here. And I'm so inspired by him and I want you to be too. So I bought three of these books and I'll be giving them away on my Instagram. It's Chelsea underscore Northrup and uh, just comment there and tell me why you like Gordon Parks and I'll send you a book. So thanks so much for watching. I hope that you are inspired and motivated to go out and shoot. Remember, you don't need to get the perfect picture today. As long as you go out and you shoot something, you're gonna get a little bit better. You're going to improve your skills a little bit more and time after time, you'll build those skills and eventually you'll be the great photographer you've always wanted to be. If you'd like to see more videos like these, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and comment down below and tell me what inspires you. I know I didn't hit everything that's inspiring and motivational. These are just a few things that work for me. So share down below and maybe you can help someone else that needs that little nudge today. Bye.